Okay, so let's go back to our our wireframe here. Now, in the last thing, I was like, oh, I'll just delete all this. But the problem is I deleted it, and what happened? Well, I got rid of my curves. Everything's associated to that. So what I'm going to do is we are going to fix that. So first, let me put this back to a vertical. So those, are, those two lines are black. I'm just going to take every single line that I use to convert entities, because it's really just there so I can model against it. So I don't need it for modeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all those. I'm going to hit click for construction and notice it becomes a dotted line. It's still there. It's still fully constrained, but it will no longer try to be used with the wireframe. Okay, everything should be good now. So let's try to extrude that. I'm going to extrude that from the mid plane. I'm going to do an eighth of an inch. And there we go. Okay, let's turn our shaded model back on. Ah, there we go. That Now we have a nice, nice little rib there. Everything's so good. We take a look at it. It all meshes together nicely. It all meshes together nicely, except for this small problem here. See, it's kind of like bumped out a little bit. We want that to be nice and smooth. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to cut off that part. And so how we're going to do it is we're just going to build something. We got that at the top, too. We're going to build something that's going to revolve it and just slice that part completely off. Get that rotated back there. And to step away for a moment. So what we're going to do is we're going to take care of those uh, those little places there. we got a couple different ways to do it. We can sit there and we can revolve something around and cut it. Or we can do something in the future and have it select the contours to make sure that it all goes well. So what we're going to do is we're just going to click on that. We're going to come over here and we're going to go to Edit Feature. And we're going to come down here and we're going to go to Selected Contours. And so now what we need to do is we're going to have to, we're going to have to fix that part. And so we'll come over here and we're just going to select our sketch region. We're going to hit Enter. And notice that the sketch block has changed. So it's no longer, if you go back up and look at one of these extrudes, you'll see it's closed in. So now we've got a contour in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to click and we're going to edit that sketch. And so what we're going to do now is let's look straight down on it. Come here and look orthogonal to it. We're kind of upside down, but that's fine. And so what I'm going to do is I want to add, I'm going to add a couple lines here. And so how we're going to do this is we want to go here, go straight up, straight across, straight across, straight down, and then straight in there. So now I've kind of built my, my box where I'm going to do my cuts. And so let's throw some dimensions in here because I want to fully constrain it. And we'll, you know, half inch, that's fine. We just want to make sure that it's longer than than the, uh, the part that we're dealing with. Okay, and so now we've got all that stuff fully constrained in there. And so now we can go and actually start taking care of this problem that we had. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to cut things away. So now I've got this built in there. I'm not using it because I'm using it for that extrude. And so I'm going to exit the sketch. So it's still there, this extra part, but we did not use it to build anything. So what we're going to do now is we're going to do a revolve cut. And so if we go and we take a look at this thing, so we've got our revolved cut here. And we're going to be able to select, and we're going to use that sketch. We're going to use that part of it. Now the problem is we need an axis of revolution. And unfortunately, if we look, we drafted that, so it doesn't really have an axis of revolution. So we're going to need to see some reference geometry and actually build it off of that reference geometry. So we'll come back to that here in a second. We're going to go to visible here, and we're going to visible temporary axes. And that's the little axis that we use to, that got created when we built this stuff. So now we'll go back into our revolved cut. 
And once again, we're going to go pick that same sketch that we had. We'll use this as our axis of revolution. And hopefully when we hit enter, it all cuts just fine. Okay, now let's go look at our rib and see how that cleaned that up down there. And up here, we should have the, the same thing. It's a nice cleaned up. It's all flat with everything, so it looks pretty. Everything's great. And I'm going to get rid of my temporary axis because I don't need to see it. And so remember, we were talking a whole thing about draft. Well, we're going to have to draft these ribs too. Because that happens when you pull this thing out of the mold. It has to have draft everywhere. Now, now here we put draft in the command. But we can actually do it through here. And so I'm going to select draft. And so we got a couple different things in here. It tells us uh, the item to draft. So we'll draft this one two degrees. And then the faces to draft, well, we're going to pick these two outside ones because those will be the faces that we're going to add. And then we have to worry about the direction of pull. So that's basically where the mold pulls out. And so this is this key right here is for where's the highlight comes up. There we go, the neutral plane. So that's where we're pulling from. And we're going to be pulling it from there. And we want to make sure, let's see, the way it's pulling out of the mold. So we have the draft here going outwards. If we want the draft going the same way, we've got to be pulling it out from the mold. And I'm fairly certain that's the right direction. We'll just hit enter and we can double check. So it should be getting fatter at the bottom, which as you do that, you can see it is. So that's good. That's what we wanted. So now I have a beautiful little rib. The only problem is I only have one rib. I want to have more than one rib, so we want to put in six ribs. So what we're going to do is we're going to go and use our circular pattern tool. I think we've used this before, so under linear pattern we can go to circular pattern. And so we need to select what features that we're going to pattern, and we're going to do multiple ones here because I want to do the extrude, I want to do the cut, and I want to do the draft. So I want to take care of all of those and do that. And so once again, I have to do it around the axis. And so I'm just using that surface there to get the temporary axis. And so spacing, well, I want to do it at, what do we got here? Um, we put in six of them. So what is that 30 degrees apart? No, it's 60 degrees apart. And we want a total of six. And there we go. So we got a nice little pattern there. And then we'll hit enter. And there we go. So now we've got it. It patterned everything that we asked for. We've got those. We've got the draft. We've got the cut. We've got everything that we need. And so the next thing that we want to do is we want to add in our bolt circle. So to do that, uh, now what could we do? We could, you know, just draw one bolt circle and then, and then do everything in. So, or we can end up patterning it. And in fact, since we just did a pattern, we can go back and add that into the pattern. But let's, let's do the, let's do the first one, the first ones first. So we'll just pick on that top surface and I'm going to put in the bolt circle. Now the bolt circle is where the center lines of the bolts are located. So in this case, we'll do 4.5 inches. Now, bolt circles are lines that don't really exist. So I'm going to go back in there. I'm going to make that a construction line. And so that way it's not uh, going to show up on anything. And so then I want to draw in my circle. So where is, let's look straight down on this. So looking straight down on the top, and now I'm going to draw my hole. I'll just pick some random thing there, and we'll give that a dimension. How thick do we want to make those? Make that uh, 375. Just click on that. It's 375. Now, this is not fully constrained, and why is that? Because I can drag this and Oops. not mean to drag the dimension tool. I can drag my circle and I can slide it anywhere on there. So we want to lock the position in. 
And so what we're going to do is we're going to do an angle off this first rib right there. So let's draw a line. I'll have my line coming out here and I've got it grounded. Now, so we've got it grounded. It's always going to be at that at that angle. The other thing that we could do, which might be a little bit better, is we're going to put in a center line. And so remember, a center line, we can do it between two things. We do want it for construction. In fact, I can throw it down an infinite length, too. That doesn't really matter. And so I want it to be between these two lines here. Ooh, and it spins around. <laughs> I, uh, I selected it wrong, though. Let me clean that up. Okay, and I fixed it. So let's go back. We'll make two center lines here. One straight through. We're going to make it horizontal. And then I'm going to do one more here to the center of my hole. So those are always center lines are always construction lines. And let's dimension between this one here and the one that's grounded. And we'll give it 30 degrees. And so that's great. And we'll go Features, we'll extrude the cut, and we're just going to go through all. So we're going to blow a hole right in there. And so there, now we have our hole. Now I want to put it as part of this pattern. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this guy, and notice that the, uh, the little arrow is letting me move back. I can only move back so far to a point where I could have done the hole. So I'm going to send it back to... Uh, we'll do it right after the boss. That should be fine. So, because if I grab this, you can see I can work back in time to see what has happened. And so, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go on a circular pattern. Since I moved it back in time, edit the feature, and then I am going to grab and add that guy to it. And that's going to put them all in. And so there we go. So now I have my flange with six holes and all set together. So this is the base of what I'm going to use. So we, we talked about drafting, a lot of circular patterns. I am going to use this in the next video. We are going to create some parametric equations so we can play around with things.